Okay, so today, as Jake mentioned, I'm going to be talking about the PRO Act or the Protecting the Right to Organize Act. Uh, the history of labor in this country is quite tragic, and this is the first time in uh, 80 years to turn that around, um, you know, with some actual, like, meaningful legislation um, on the federal level. So just to get you familiar with the topic at first, um, the PRO Act, uh, what it does is it introduces meaningful enforceable penalties for companies that violate workers' rights, um, such as like, it streamlines access to justice for workers who suffer retaliation for ex exercising their rights. Um, currently right now, there are no financial penalties at all for uh, like stopping your workers from organizing. Uh, and with the PRO Act, um, for each violation, uh, businesses or bosses can uh, get a $50,000 penalty per violation, which is huge because right now it's, uh, they get bubkiss. Um, moving on to the next. So in short, the PRO Act prevents employers from interfering in union elections and prohibits employers from requiring workers to attend anti-union meetings. Uh, and the PRO Act also removes prohibitions on workers acting in solidarity with workers at workplaces and protects workers who engage in peaceful protest actions with their fellow workers. Uh, to, to, a moment. Um, I want to give some historical context to the PRO Act. How did we get here? Um, and that's, uh, you know, actually it's really important to, to, to know your labor history and why it's, uh, how do we get to such a shitty situation? Uh, so in 1935, uh, FDR signed into law the National Labor Relations Act, um, also known as the, uh, the Wagner Act. And that gave, uh, that gave workers a lot of things and I'm about to go into it. And then in 1947, the Taft-Hartley Act uh, was written, uh, also known as the Labor Management Relations Act. And uh, what that did was it really, um, it hamstrung unions and we'll see how in a moment, Let's see. Okay, so the NLLRA, uh, essentially it set the right of all workers to join a union and engage in collective bargaining. Uh, it defined unfair labor practices. Uh, it gave the right of workers for elections for labor union representatives. Uh, banned company unions, or also known as yellow unions, which are unions in which uh, the bosses are a part of the union and they make decisions within the union. Um, and that's not okay, which is why it was banned. Um, and then it excluded railway and airline workers because racism, uh, a lot of railway workers and airline workers were, um, you know, Chinese immigrants, uh, as well as federal employees. Um, as far as I know, not so much racism there, but it wouldn't surprise me if there was a little bit of racism. Uh, and then the Taft-Hartley Act. Well, it's 1947, the US just beat fascism. Uh, you know, the globe, the global uh, ecosystem is now safe. Authoritarianism is dead. And it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a era of economic prosperity. Let's let's get rid of all authoritarianism and let's workers, you know, make decisions on themselves. Let's, you know, self-determinism. Isn't that isn't that like the American way? Uh, no, not at all. Uh, Taft Hartley Act really fucked over workers. Um, so, I'm, I'm, as you can imagine, uh, you know, the bourgeois class really hated the uh, the National Labor Relations Act. In fact, they tried to repeal it several times and they failed until they passed the Taft-Hartley Act, which amended uh, uh, the NLRA. Uh, so it banned, effectively it banned closed shops, uh, solidarity strikes. And by the way, there's a lot of jargon in here. Um, if you have any questions of the jargon, please ask at the end and um, I and anyone else will be happy to explain what any of these terms are, but closed shops are essentially uh, shops that are 
um, you have to be in the union to be able to even apply and work at the shop. Uh, solidarity strikes are banned. Wildcat strikes are banned. Secondary boycotts and mass picketing. Jurisdictional strikes uh, gave the right to employer, right of employer to oppose unions, so employers could uh, spread anti-union propaganda within their labor force. Uh, it banned political contributions to candidates from unions. Uh, it banned federal employees from being able to strike. Not only were federal employees not able to join unions with the NR NRLA, but now they can't even strike. And then uh, it allowed for states to enact right to work laws that uh, banned union shops in many states um, and really hamstrung unions. Uh, another fun you know, bit of history about this is, uh, you know, Truman, as horrible and xenophobic as he is for unnecessarily uh, dropping a, a two A-bombs on Japan, uh, he, he, like, he vetoed the Taft-Hartley Act, but uh, a Democratic and Republican uh, Congress bipartisanly overrode that veto. Um, so it really shows which parties are for the workers and what ones aren't. That's both, they're both not for the party, for the workers, they hate workers. So there's an anti-worker legacy here. Um, currently right now we have uh, 6.2 union membership of the prime, uh, private sector, uh, that's of 2019. Um, Epic Systems Corp uh, versus Lewis is a recent Supreme Court case that um, uh, Justice Gorsuch, the fascist fuck, uh, wrote the um, majority opinion on, uh, and essentially it, it allows employers to uh, force arbitration on a worker if they have a grievance with a company, uh, instead of the workers being able to collectively bargain for, uh, you know, fixing any problems within the workplace. And of course, California Prop 22, which appealed uh, Assembly Bill 5, which uh, Re, it's essentially reclassifies uh, independent contractors uh, as not being able to be employees, uh, which means that, uh, you know, gig workers like Uber, DoorDash, et cetera, aren't able to get any, you know, benefits from being employees. Uh, so winning the PRO Act, um, so it already passed the House uh, last February, uh, has many congressional co-sponsors, uh, labor is going to be pressing hard for it, and the Biden administration has expressed support of it. Uh, you know, take that with the smallest grain of salt as you possibly can. Uh, you know, Obama also had, you know, pro-union language in his uh, platform, but he didn't do shit about it. Um, which leads us to the questions. Uh, what sort of campaigns can DSA create to push the Biden administration to prior prioritize passing the PRO Act? Um, how can we prepare our unions for this? Are they even ready for something as major as the PRO Act? Uh, how can we use the PRO Act to bring about labor militancy? Um, and how can socialists better agitate workers to join unions once the PRO Act is created? And I just wanna, I, I feel like I kind of didn't really drive the point home is that the Taft-Hartley Act for 80 years, it has really prevented workers from being able to uh, join unions and to create unions. And what the PRO Act would do is throw most of those uh, laws into the trash can and give workers the right and the power to be able to do these things, to be able to organize, to be able to create unions and join unions and strike and such and such.